Okay, guys, so we're going to do the last video in my little series about how to get started fishing. If you've never really fished before and you're interested in starting and you want to learn what's the best way to go about just getting a rod and reel, getting out there, catching a few fish, and starting to fuel that passion towards becoming a much better fisherman and, and really learning all different types of baits, rods and reels, everything. So to get started, we talked about you need just a, a standard medium size, medium action spinning rod, okay? You want to load it up with 10 to 12 pound monofilament, which is what's on this one, or you want to go with 20 or 30 pound braid. Any of those are good choices. If you do throw braid, you need to go back and look. I've got a video on how to tie a monofilament leader onto that braid with an easy knot that'll hold for you and uh, let you catch a lot of fish, slide in and out of the guides real easy. So check that out if you're going to go with braid. Otherwise, if you're going with mono or you already know how to do your leaders, we're going to talk about what kind of bait you're going to use to begin with. So the first bait, in my opinion, that you should learn how to throw if you're bass fishing is some kind of a soft plastic straight jerk style bait. So a Zoom Super Fluke or a Trick Worm or any kind of straight worm um, or a Senko. So basically, you're going to look for... These are super flukes, so zoom, super fluke, and they're just going to look like a little fish. That's just a couple of different colors. You can go with a natural color or something that looks like a bait fish. I have a, a bait fish, a shad looking bait rigged up right here. We're going to talk about how to rig it in a minute, but first let me also show you what a trick worm looks like. So same company, zoom. I use a lot of zoom baits, so zoom baits. Here's trick worm. It's just a real straight worm. It just looks like a worm. Straight. No tail, no curly tail, none of that. And you're going to rig it and work it the same way that you would a fluke. So when you're getting started, also the hook is really important. So when you're starting out, you want to get a really sharp hook that's going to give you a good hook set easily. You're not, you don't want to use a hook that's not super sharp or that doesn't penetrate well, or has a tip that will get bent or broken, hanging up on docks and reeds and stuff, you want a, a really good hook. So if you're going to spend a little bit more money on any of your tackle, hooks are the best way to go. This is what I use for all my soft plastic spinning rods, same hook, just a full rod, offset shank, wide gap worm hook, and, and Gamagatsu is probably the best company I know of to buy them from. So again, four rod, wide bend worm hook. Once you have your hooks, you have your fluke, you tie it on. I've got videos on knots, how to tie, but we're also going to look here at how we're going to rig it. So we have our fluke. So good at tangling everything up. So here's our fluke. That's what it looks like when it's rigged. So we're going to back it up. We're going to go back out, unhook it, and then we're going to rig it from start to finish so that you can see exactly how you want to set it up so that you're in the best situation you can put yourself in to catch fish, how it's going to work the best and look the best. So you're going to have your fluke. You're going to have your hook. You're going to push your hook right in the middle of the nose of the fluke until the straight, until the bend starts on the hook. When you get to that bend, bring the hook out right in the middle of the nose of the fluke. So it's basically going to look just like that. And you want to be in the middle as you come out. You want everything to be perfectly straight. So you're going to pull the nose of the bait all the way around to the front of the hook and out past the knot and the beginning of the hook, the hook eye there. So you want it to look kind of like this. You want it real clean so that there's no knot, no little tag in hanging out. Uh, and that's going to really help you catch fish. That's just one of my pet peeves. I love to have a real clean nose to my bait. I don't like the line squiggly hanging out where I cut the knot. I don't want the eye of the hook showing I've never seen a bait fish swimming around on the lake with the eye of a hook on his nose. It just doesn't look natural. So to me, this is the best look. When you lay the hook across the bait, so when you have the front hook and then you lay the hook just beside the bait, you can see where that hook needs to go in for that bait to hang perfectly straight. So we're going to go back, push the bait up a little bit, go straight through with the hook. We're going to try to come out centered again. And then once we're centered, we got the hook point just lay in there. We're going to pull the bait forward, stretch it, and then push it up just enough that the hook catches in the skin and release it. 
That's called skin hooking your bait. And what it does is it allows your bait to come right through grass and weeds and stuff like that without getting hung up every time. But when a fish grabs it like that, it pops the hook out and the hook's ready to be set into the fish. So that's the way you hook it. You're going to work it with little short taps. You don't want to pull on it. You don't want to have just a steady winding retrieve. And you don't want to just leave it still very often. So what you're going to want to do is have your line thrown, cast out to the bank or to the reeds, and then tap it. So all with your wrist, just let the rod hang and tap it straight sideways and down. And you're going to want to keep your rod tip down because if it's up, you're getting the wind, everything else, and there's always going to be a bigger bow in your line, so you can't really feel what the fluke is doing. You keep it low to the water and just tap on that sack line, and if a fish does grab it, the first time you tap, you'll feel that there's resistance there, and that's a good time to just point and set the hook, especially when you're first learning. Don't worry about whether it's a fish or not. If you tap it and there's something resistance on it, it takes more than it normally takes to pull the fluke, set the hook, okay? Set the hook the same way you're doing flipping. You're going to go across your body. The hand that's holding the rod, you go across your body from that, and you jerk 45 degrees. So if you're working it like this, you get bit, you're going to jerk straight like that. The hand that's holding the rod goes across your body, okay? So that's about the best I know to tell you to get started. You want to make sure that you're working it with slack line taps to make that fluke dart. When you're watching it, in the water and you always want to pay attention to where it's at in the water even if it's dingy and you can't see it or the flukes down underwater too deep for you to be able to watch it you throw out there you're working that fluke you always keep your eyes on where it's at sometimes they'll bite it on the top and you'll see them bite it on the top sometimes you'll see a flash from underwater or a boil will boil will come up from underwater where the fish grabbed it any sign that you get bit is a great key to get ready and set the hook. It gives, it makes you know that the fish is there before the fish knows you're there. So you always want to watch it. And it also gives you an opportunity in clearer water or when you're closer to the boat to watch fish and see how they're reacting to your bait. Because you'll see them following the bait along. You'll see them coming up from below to inspect it. And when you dart that bait, when you tap it, you watch how they react and that begins your understanding of how fish react to different things that you can do with an artificial lure. So it's just a really good way to build knowledge. It's a great way to get a lot of bites. There's really no time of year or no situation where it doesn't catch a few fish. It just may not catch the biggest fish. But again, there are times when it will. It'll catch the biggest fish in the lake sometimes of the year or some situations in the way that they're feeding. It also gives you the ability to adapt your fishing to the conditions. You can work it across the top of the water when the fish are active and really feeding. You can let it go all the way to the bottom, jerk it up off the bottom, and then let it just sit and fall back down. Now, again, you don't want to just throw it out there and wait. They're not going to normally swim along and pick it up off the bottom. But if you tap it a couple times and it darts up off the bottom and then it just flutters down, and lands on the bottom, it looks like a dying bait fish. And that's a perfect imitation of what any bass is going to want to eat. Something that's easy, that's not going to run away from him. He can just swim over there and eat it. So you can really tailor your retrieve to what the fish are doing every day. And that gets you started thinking in terms of every trip I make, it's a puzzle. And I just have to put the pieces of the puzzle together to catch more fish. And you need to pay attention. If you throw one time and you work it across the top and you don't get bit and then you work it kind of slower and you don't get bit and then the next time you throw it out there and jerk it two or three times and kill it and just give it three or four seconds and when you go to pick it up, he's got it, there's your first clue. They want it on the fall. They want it dropping all the way down to the bottom and holding still and just keep repeating that and you'll begin to catch more and more and more fish. And it doesn't mean that once you find that, that's always the way you're going to catch them. It just means that every time you go, you need to start kind of putting the puzzle pieces together to understand how are they biting and what can you do to make more fish bite. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're all there trying to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you catch a lot of fish. I'm going to throw some video on of me throwing a fluke to see if it kind of gives you some more direction or you can kind of watch, get some tips out of it. 
And uh, I hope you get out there. I hope you catch a lot of fish. I hope you're enjoying the videos. If you haven't followed me or subscribed, please do. It'll help keep me going and, and we can begin to add some more varied content as we go. Hope you're having fun. Enjoy it. Catch a lot of fish. See you. how you do it. First rod, first reel, boom, throw it out there, jerk it, nothing to it. <laughs> he was hungry. Catching the box, they're getting bigger.
That's a little pencil we used. Ooh. Big fish hit at it and didn't get it, and the little one got it. That was a giant that hit it there, though. Little one got it. Big fish just boiled at it right there. I mean, there's a giant boil. Big old boil. Got your ass. I saw you coming and tried to steal my fluke. I saw you coming and tried to steal my fluke, dude. Little pickerel. Catch all kinds of stuff out here. So we're going to move around here in a bit, but just for starting out, there's one. Eat it while I was winding it. Another pike. We're on the pike now all of a sudden. That's the thing. You know, this thing will catch anything. Whatever's around, if it eats a little fish, it'll catch it. It'll catch it. So another pike. Pickerel. I guess what the real name is. <laughs> 